Hello Salem, I'm your mayor Chuck Bennett and I'm glad to be back this month with another great segment on the wonderful things happening in our city. I want to start with a calendar reminder for next month because in June, the Public Works Department is bringing back Public Works Day this year. Join us on Friday, June 17th at Riverfront Park from 1030 to 2. You can meet Claudia, the 29-foot Chinook salmon, take part in a water pipe repair, sit in on a backhoe, a dump truck. It's a free event for all ages. Watch the city website and calendar for details. Let's also not forget that we're fortunate in Salem to have public art on display every day throughout the city. Many works of fine art can be seen at the City of Salem public buildings and outdoors in our downtown area. These include pieces from the City of Salem Public Art Collection as well as pieces owned by other parties like the Salem Public Library Foundation. You can check out online public art scavenger hunt and test your knowledge of eight outdoor artworks. And speaking of art, I am delighted to have with me today the Executive Director of the Salem Art Association, Matthew Boulay. He's going to tell us about what the Art Association is up to, like the fact that our famous Salem Art Fair will be back this summer. Well, Matthew, thank you for sharing some time with us today. I've uh, been looking forward to visiting with you. Tell us a little about yourself and kind of where you see art in Salem these days. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've only been in the role uh, officially for a few months, I I interim a, a year longer. Um, I started making art after I came home from the war in Iraq. So my wow. art is all about that experience of going to war and coming home from war. Oh, well, and thank you for your service first. Of course, yeah, and, and, and relatively late in life. I didn't start making art till I was in my 40s, um, which is kind of an old man standard by, you no, know, for most no, artists. No. Old men are like me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're still a child. So, the, you know, the art comes from that place, and the Salem Art Association is all about supporting local community artists. Right. So we have a huge range of, of artists, and I think... Uh, I think art is booming these days. Lots of people during the pandemic were able to spend more time making art. That's a great point. Because, uh, you know, one of the things with the, uh, like the art barn and, and uh, the Bush House Museum is that it's been a couple of years, uh, right. really quite a while. And uh, if I were to go to either the art barn or both, let's just talk a little about both, the, the art barn and the museum, what am I going to see? It's been a while. For some people, they moved here and they've never been there. And we would love to say, come on in. <laughs> come on down. Uh, uh, we're open right now, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. We'll soon add uh, Sundays. What time do you open? We open at noon, noon okay. to five. Okay, we'll great. We'll soon open for Sundays. And you're going to see some things that are very familiar. When you walk in, the, the, the sales gallery is right there. You can mm -hmm. buy stuff, which is always popular. Um, but the exhibitions are constantly changing. We've got um, uh, a young uh, student from Linfield painting right now a massive mural across four walls in our focus gallery. That's the upstairs gallery? That's the downstairs one. The downstairs one. Upstairs, okay. a professor from Western, Sung Young Park, installing uh, a, a fabulous, very ornate set of five or six pieces throughout the gallery. It is something you got to come and see, much harder to describe. But yeah. it, is, it is very contemporary art. She's an immigrant. It responds to her story of coming to this, um, this country, finding home, um, making a new life for herself. So it's not a cultural exhibit so much as a personal... Very personal journey. Memora, mem memorandum sort of of her and life. And a lot of it in her work, Sung Young's work, deals with something that became all too real during the pandemic is, is, is questions of life and death and mortality. Yeah. yeah. How about Bush House? The, what, what must be one of the oldest houses in town and certainly one of the most unusual places that uh, most of us have seen once or twice but maybe ought to get back to. What kind We'd of love for on? folks to come back. We've been closed since March, uh, the start of the pandemic. We're opening in June with an extraordinary new exhibition. It's called Dreams Deferred. It's the first time we've, we've installed an exhibition 
in Bush House Museum. And so if you don't know the museum, it is a, a beautiful home built in the 1880s. It is still very much of that period. Um, Asel Bush was the founder of the Statesman Journal, started some banks. It looks like he just walked out the door when you walk in there, that he may be out in the backyard. It, it very much <laughs> has that feel. Yeah. And it's gorgeous in that in the, uh, building in that sense. He's a complicated man, and yeah. he wasn't always on the right side of issues of race, for example. And so this Dreams Deferred is, a, is an effort to welcome into Bush House Museum people that might not have been able to enter 150 years oh, ago. Wow. Young dreamers came to this country um, as immigrants, as children, and the installation puts their profiles in the different rooms in the Bush House Museum. So next to a portrait of Bush and his family will be a portrait of a, a, you know, of a young Latina woman who came to this country and her story. Yeah. So it's a way of reopening by saying this museum is open to everybody. Please come in. Yeah, that's great. Because one of the things that can happen is you might feel like you're looking at a place set in amber, that right. it's frozen in time. Right. And I, I'm really intrigued how you're going to pull. I look forward to seeing uh, this kind of reinterpretation of the use of Bush House. That's exactly what it is. And it's ambitious. It, it, you know, it, it's going to um, strike some people as um, um, really more contemporary in that space than they yeah. might want. Sure. But it's going to strike others as exactly the right thing to do for a community that is really trying to be inclusive and, and, and welcome all. I want to talk to you just for a second about uh, sort of intergenerational things. And there's two things that come to mind to me. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the art fair. Yep. It, it's just that has now spans multiple generations and is, is really back with full force. And uh, I, I think we're all very excited about that. That's been one of the great festivals here in Salem. And then the programming for children yep. Uh, yep. by the Art Association. Kind of what, talk to me about those two areas. Lots of news on both fronts. Um, you know, we haven't had Art Fair live and in person for two years because of the pandemic. It will be third weekend of July. Um, we're expecting huge crowds. There's lots of demand. I had folks knocking on the door yesterday uh, saying, is Art Fair going to be happening this year? So I think there's a lot of demand. Um, we have just juried more than 280 artists. Um, so again, wow. the, the artists who weren't able to show for the last two years at fairs across the Northwest are now uh, really you know, eager for this. 280? Um, 280. We could only accept about 210. Wow. Uh, but that's a big number. That I mean, is. That's a, great, that's a lot of people. It's a big art fair. And as you know, it runs a gamut. There's, there's paintings, there's sculpture, oh, there's yeah. jewelry, there's quilting, crafting. Um, if you like any type of art, you're going to find something at the art fair. Of course, there's a wine court, there's a beer court, there's food, there's children's activities. Um, we, we're celebrating really two themes with Art Fair this year. One is protect the trees after the devastating uh, ice storm great. of last February. We're really doing everything we can to celebrate and protect the trees. And the second is it's to celebrate the cultural history. This is Kalapuyan land and, and, and honoring that, working with some indigenous artists to celebrate that. Oh, great. So there'll be indigenous art there and as well as contemporary and other yeah, fantastic. Yeah. How about the kids? So lots of good uh, children's programming. Uh, summer camps this year. Really? In June, July, and August in the, um, in the annex. We ran them for two weeks last year, and, and demand was so high, we decided to try three or four, maybe even five weeks this year. So lots so, of demand. So I want to register my great-grandchild. <laughs> go to, go to great-grandchildren are welcome. <laughs> go to Salem Art Association. Um, dot org or, or call me email me we'll send you an application where registration is open now um, we also did I, I just want to mention this incredible program with um, two additional partners youth era which is a downtown drop-in center for homeless youth or youth right. in crisis and marion polk food share which runs food pantries right so we ordered and designed um, about a thousand art kits last summer. We're doing this again this summer. 
We hired Youth Era Youth to assemble the kits, to put the pieces together. For many of them, it was their first job experience. Oh, wow. And this experience over the summer with us led to their first kind of real job at places like Cafe Yum. Uh, and then Marion Polk Food Share distributed the kits to pantries in Marion Polk, Yamhill County. Oh, okay. So that families could come, pick up groceries, and at the same time, pick up art kits for their children oh, over that's the summer. Great. It was a win 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 for everybody. Well, what are you looking forward to this next year? Have you got some sort of like brand new initiative you're looking at for the Yard Association? I mean, it, it really is these elements of doubling down on working with children. Great. And having programming that is live and in person. Well, and your outreach to different elements in the community sounds really exciting too. Well, Matthew, Thank you so much for yeah, joining me, and uh, we'll look forward to the art fair for sure, and uh, uh, getting to the Bush House exhibition as well. That uh, sounds great. Along with everything else going on, so <laughs> good time to visit art. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matthew. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you.